Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. We're going to look at verses 5 and 6. 5 and 6. And they say a very you know, famous verse. We memorize this verse. We teach our kids to memorize this verse because these verses are very important. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, title of the message is, When you're at a loss, when you're at a loss. When you're at a loss. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Brother Richard, can you please pray for the message? Lord God, good morning. We thank you for another day of salvation here. Uh, we're very grateful that you came down and humbled yourself and, and to live as a man and took the cross and, yes, and took all the sins of the world, Lord, and shedding your blood to wash away all of our own sins, Lord. Yeah, and we're very man. grateful for that. Yes. And no one else can do that, not even of our own selves, Lord. And we pray that you be with us today. Please fill us with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Keep our minds, our hearts clear from, from any evil thoughts, any wickedness, Lord. Keep it clear. Yes. And allow our ears to be attentive to Pastor Jay. Yes. And I pray unto you, Lord God, to please fill Pastor Jay with the Holy yes. Ghost. And allow him to speak to us, preach to us, rebuke us, reprove us, uh, that we may be become better Christians. Amen. And that way, the sermon that he teaches us today, Lord, that whatever troubles that we may go through, Lord, we always trust on you, Amen. Lord, and that we always uh, come before you and talk to you and pray to you and ask you for guidance, Lord. And we always go back to the Holy Bible, the King James Version Amen. only, that we may seek you, Lord, and that you may speak to us while we read it and look for any advice, anything that we may be going through, Lord, whether it be sickness, illnesses, or any emotional or physical stress, Lord, that we always go to you, Lord, and ask for guidance and that... Only you can help us, Lord, and we thank you for that. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. 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 When you're at a loss, this happens to everyone. You know, someday or some period of time, just things just aren't going your way. Literally, you make choice A, it's wrong. You make choice B, it's wrong. Choice C, it's wrong. Every choice that you make is contrary to what you expected to happen. And you're at a loss. Sometimes you're at a loss for worse, as they say. And as a Christian, you have to really check and reflect your life on a daily basis whether you're at a place of a loss. As a Christian, you shouldn't be at a place of loss when you're trusting in the Lord. Amen. However, once you stop trusting the Lord, you're going to be at a loss. You're going to be at a place where things aren't going to go your way. Whether you think it's rational, whether you think it's humanistic, whether you think from your own understanding it's okay, but since you're not doing verses 5 and 6 in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, you're going to be at a loss. You are 100% sure that this decision I made will work out. You're 100% sure that this decision, you know, I just set out to do will bring me my own, you know, expected result. However, on the contrary, it doesn't work like that. Especially if you are a saved child of God. God has his own ways of, you know, instructing you and guiding you. That's a book of Romans 8, 28. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are to call according to his purpose. Why would Lord write such a verse in there? Because Christians, you are going to go through trials. You're going to go through temptations. You're going to fall. You're going to be knocked down. You're going to be you know, underground. You're going to be in a place where all you could do is just you know, put your head down in, you know, put your head inside a blanket, and sometimes you just want to cry, and you may just cry, because 
you have nowhere else to go because you made such a choice in your life where you thought it was going to be okay, it was going to bring, you know, whatever the result it may be, relationship, financial, or anything else in between, but it didn't go your way. And then what happens? You get super dejected. You know, you're down. You become a, you know, Debbie Downer, you know, you become powder, you know, you have frowning, and then you have a darkness in your face, and you're just sad. You know, when people are at a loss, what's their face look like? What's their facial expression look like? You know, they're not smiling much of the time. They're in a moment of shock. They're in a moment of sadness. They're in a moment of depression. And they're going to be in the state of discouragement. That's why if you are going through those stages in your life where there are few instances or many instances of at a loss, place, then you have to really listen to God's word. You really have to examine your heart. Yes. You have to really spend time with the Lord and examine what's really going on in your life. Think about it. As a Christian, you should be confident in the Lord. You should have joy in the Lord. You should be happy. Amen. I mean, you shouldn't be unhappy as a Christian. Yes. I mean, I'm at a loss when I look at my own life and there's no joy. I mean, what's wrong with me, right? You're at a loss, right, as a Christian when you should be happy in the Lord. Whether you're in a good situation, bad situation, good things happen to you, bad things happen to you, because you know that Lord is faithful. However, you and I forget the sense that Lord is faithful and he who promised will keep that promise. And once we forget that and we go into you know, our things, we go into our ways, then what's going to happen? We're going to wrong direction, wrong path, wrong guidance, and we're going to fall. And we're going to fail. You know, there's a lot of people who say, you know, failure is not really a failure, you know as long as you learn from it, and then you become better from it. You know, I agree with that, right? As Christians, you and I will fail multiple times. Yes. I mean, sometimes people don't like that F word, okay? If you don't like that F word, you know, sometimes you'll, you know, stumble. I mean, but F word is the best. You will fall. Yes. I mean, you will fall. That's what the Bible says in Proverbs 24, 16. It just meant fall it seven times and then rise us up again. Amen. Spiritually speaking, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're just in the sight of God. Woo! But you're going to fall. I mean, I've fallen many, many times. I mean, I still fall, right? Because I think of flesh. Yes. I have think of my old nature. And because I'm not perfect, and because, you know, I don't have the new body yet. Right. Then until that day, you know, day of redemption of your body, you know, until the day of rapture, you and I are going to constantly fail here and there. It's just that you and I cannot fail for same things over and over and over. If you look at your past month, you know, past year so far, or even past few years, you know, I look at it too, and I'm like, man, I'm at a loss. Why did I do the same thing over again? When I know the result of it will only bring me, you know, emptiness, sadness, right? Discouragement, depression, and it's going to bring me only, you know, things against the Bible. Why do I do it, right? Why do you do it? And then you're like, you know the right answer. That's the funny part. You and I know the right answer. You and I know what to do, what's the right thing to do. But you still do it. You still do the wrong things. Why? Because you don't follow Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Because you don't trust the Lord with all of your heart. Because you lean on to your own understanding. And in all your ways, you don't acknowledge him. When we look at 
Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Let's all go to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. God says, He will direct your path if you do these three things. You know, these are spiritual things. Number one is what? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And second thing, lead not unto thine own understanding. And third thing, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. So we have our, you know, points there already. You know, God laid it out very easily. You know, you don't need a scholar, Greek scholar, Hebrew scholar to explain this to you. You know, plain, you know, KJV, English, you know, tells you. And lets you know what to do. So number one thing is trust in the Lord. If you don't want to be at a loss, you have to trust in the Lord. This is a heartfelt confidence that comes from your heart. It's not coming from your brain. It's not coming from your certain situations or circumstances you're in. Because if you look at your situations and circumstances you're in, you are not going to trust the Lord. 100%. Why? Because the things that you see from your eyes will a lot of times affect how you think and how you react. If you are at that place, you know, God forbid, but, you know, say if you're at that supermarket when the shooting's going on, right? I mean, how are you going to trust the Lord at that time? Say if you're in a war and you're a soldier in a war, and there's bullets flying everywhere. How are you going to trust in the Lord? You need to have that heartfelt confidence which leans and relies on the Lord and you count him faithful. I mean, that's the key. You have to count Lord faithful. If Lord says he's going to take care of you, you believe him and you put him up to it. And do you think the Lord will ever fail? He's not. Let's turn our Bibles to Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 23. So you have to look at your life right now. Am I really trusting in the Lord with all my heart? Right? Are you really trusting the Lord where you have that heartfelt confidence and you just leans and relies on him because you know that Lord is faithful? Numbers chapter 23 Verse 19, Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. So point number one, if you don't want to be at a loss, just trust in the Lord. But this trust in the Lord is that you have a 100% confidence in the Lord that he's faithful. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. The Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Or, make, or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? That's our Lord. He is faithful. Human beings are unfaithful, right? Because we're not perfect. And then we fail, and, you know, we don't do the things that we're supposed to do many times. But Lord is faithful. Amen. If I know that according to the word of God, I'm doing the right thing, And no matter what circumstance I am in, no matter what situation I am in, I know that if I were to put my faith in him and I count him faithful, who has promised, then I could be confident in the Lord. Then I won't have to have that depression, discouragement, you know, sadness in your Christian walk. Why? Because all your trust is not in your circumstance, your ability you know, your brain, you know, someone else. Your trust is wholly in the Lord. Man, when you have your 100% trust in the Lord, there's nothing for you to worry about. I mean, literally, is there anything greater than our God? Is there anything that comes even closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? And if he said he's going to be faithful and he said he's going to keep his promise. Thank you, Lord. When the Lord said, you know, he's going to provide all your needs, right? That's right. Then he will. Amen. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. I mean, he provided need for two million Jews 
coming out of Egypt. He provided needs for countless, countless characters in the word of God. Yes. He provided needs for you throughout your life. Amen. Then why aren't you trusting him in every part of your life? Like you're all heart. It's not the easiest thing to do. Like the Bible, you know, verse says, we'd all die in heart. Especially during the times of trial and tribulation. I mean, you might be going through financial trouble. You might be going through relationship trouble. You know, you might be going through health troubles, right? But before you worry about all of that, what does Bible say? Bible say, trust in the Lord. Just trust Him. Wherever you are at your stage in life, wherever you are, you know, as a Christian, you have to trust in the Lord. When you trust in the Lord, you could have that confidence in the Lord. You know, there's no better example than, you know, when a child looks at the parent and they know that they're going to provide their need. Child knows that my mommy and daddy will give me food when I'm hungry. Yeah. Many times child will go, I mean, parents will go above and beyond just to feed their children. Even if they hunger, they're going to feed their children because they love their children. If you, as a human being, have that kind of love for your own children, you know, how much love do you think Almighty God has for you? I mean, if the Lord says, I'm going to take care of you, then he's going to take care of you. Yes. Why do you need to worry about it? Why do you need to, you know, look at your surroundings? You and I have to stop looking at surroundings. True. and Stop looking at what's going on. You know, I mean, you have to be aware of it, but don't let that be the focus of your life. Amen. Your focus always should be the Lord, yes. and then your focus always should be trusting in Him every stage of your life. The reason you fail, the reason you constantly fall is that because, simple, you don't trust the Lord. I mean, if the Lord says, do this, then suddenly you get a text from the devil and the world and your flesh. And then you waver, and you don't do what the Lord said to do, right? Then what's going to happen? You're going to fail. It's either yes or no. Are you trusting in the Lord with all of your heart? Again, when the Bible says all thine heart, it's everything. It's 100%. You don't trust the Lord for 50%. Right? Lord, financial stuff, I got it cover. So it's okay. But relationship stuff, man, I need your help, Lord. I'll trust you. Lord, you know, relationship, financial stuff, I got it covered. But I need you for my health, right? Where you're like, your health is good. And you're like, Lord, I need your help with the financial, you know, my career, you know, and my family and relationship. Then what happens when you are not trusting the Lord 100% every part of your life? When something difficult were to happen, when something dramatic and chaotic things happen, what happens? Instead of trusting the Lord for 100% for everything, you stop trusting the Lord for everything. You start dropping it. You know, there's domino effect. That's a you're at a loss. I thought I trusted Lord you know, for this certain things. And I thought he was supposed to take care of me. But did you trust in the Lord with all of your heart? Every inch of your heart? Or did you think that it was okay for you to do your own things for certain things of your life? Good then what happens? When once that thing falls... Everything else falls. Yes. That's why what happens is that as a Christian, you committed to the Lord. You say, I'm not going to do that sin anymore. Man, so that sin, so how, what does domino look like? You know, you line it up, right? Those pieces. And then you're standing here. And those sins are back here. Standing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you're so assured of yourself. Because you've gone through so many things in your life as a Christian. You thought you became victorious. You have become more faithful, right? And then you're a more faithful soldier. 
And you're like, I don't need to worry about sins back here anymore because I'm right here. And then what happens? You become complacent. You start trusting in yourself instead of trusting in the Lord. Right. Man, I'm doing such a great job at work. You know, I'm getting promotion after promotion. Wow, you know, I'm meeting great people. You know, I think the Lord's giving me a mate for my life, right? Oh, man, health-wise, I'm doing so good. I'm eating good food. You know, I mean, I'm in good shape, right? You know, I'm doing my minimal. I'm going to church. You know, I'm doing my Bible study. I'm doing street preaching, you know, all of that. But there are certain parts still not trusting 100%. You're trusting in your own ability right. and own capabilities and own thoughts, right? And your own knowledge and your brain, right? That little bit of pride, you know, that little lump. Yeah. Just wait, just wait a little bit. It's gonna bring destruction. It's gonna, that lump's gonna lump the whole thing. So one domino falls, then what's gonna happen? It has a ripple effect. Next domino falls, next one, next one, next one, next one. And then the last three or last two or last one that you thought you'll never do again, you're looking at yourself, you're at a loss. You're doing it again. You're like, I was never going to doubt the Lord again. I was never going to do this sin again. Where am I? I'm doing it again. Why? Because you did not trust in the Lord with all thine heart. You didn't give all your heart to him. That's why. Those things are bound to happen. So unless like today you make that commitment and, you know, it's like a life or death commitment, that type of conviction, I'm going to trust in the Lord with all my heart. No matter what the circumstances are, no matter what happens, whether there are trial times, you know, difficult times along the way, I'm just going to trust in the Lord. I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to sway. I'm just going to put my faith in the Lord. Unless you do that, don't be surprised how soon that domino effect is going to happen. Don't be surprised how soon all those things that you thought was a perfect protection to stop you from you know, committing those things in the back, you start doing it again. That's why the devil is very smart. He knows when you're trusting in the Lord with all of your heart. It's going to just leave you alone a little bit. But once your life gets a little bit harder and difficult, he knows the sweet spot. Oh, man, don't trust the Lord. Let me open the door for you a little bit. You know, I'm the God of this current evil world. You know, you know Lord, your God, you know, has given me permission. So let me open the door a little bit, right? And you know, it's not the way you should be doing. But hey, let's rationalize it. You know, let's think it through. You know, there is a reasonable. Don't you hear that yourself telling you or people around you telling you all the time? It's reasonable to do it. Yes. And then they make you compromise. And you start committing sin. That's right. right. I mean, if you know that you do that thing deep inside, you know that leads to eventually committing whatever you weren't supposed to do in the first place. But you start reasoning with yourself, you know, part of debate stage in the temptation. And what's going to happen? You're going to justify it. You're like, okay. You know, this little sin is not going to harm me too much. After I commit it, I'm just going to ask the Lord for forgiveness. I mean, isn't that all your, a lot of your attitude a lot of times? Yeah. Like, you know what? Guilty. Deep inside, man, I know I'm going to be sorry, but Lord, I'm just a human being. You start playing that humanistic card. Yes. Like, Lord, I'm just a human being. You know, I'm, I'm just a weak flesh. So I'm, I, you know what, Lord? I know it's something that I'm not supposed to do, and I know it is a sin, but I'm still going to do it. Because I need that little bit of pleasure in my life. I need that fun, Right? I need a, you know, a little bit of you know, high experience in my life. It's so dull. It's so you know, hard, trivial. You know, it's just a hard Christian walk. So I need that little, you know, my own fleshly happiness here and there. But Lord, I'm going to confess my sins afterwards. 
I mean, that's, that's like, a, you know, that's such a slap in the face to the Lord, right? Lord, I know it's wrong. I'm going to be sorry for it, and I'm going to confess my sins. But I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to commit this sin. Lord, just please, you know, forgive me later on. You know what that leads to? You think you're going to stop at that moment? No. No. Man, with that attitude, you're going to go all the way. Yes. I mean, these dominoes, it's going to make everything fall, and then you're going to start creating new ones, and then you're going to make those fall too. I mean, you, you do things that you never thought you would ever do, right? I mean, cussing, you know, fornication, cheating, lying, right? Every little thing, yes. stealing, you know, everything start coming, yes. coming together. Why? Because you, instead of trusting the Lord with all of your heart, you trust that Lord partly, partially, for some part, for majority part, and you left that little space alone, and then that thing just grew like a monster. Snowball effect, right? It grew and grew and grew, and you can't handle it anymore. Right. You came to a point where sin has controlled your life. Your flesh, the world, and the devil has controlled your life where you can't even have ability to stop it anymore. And then when that happens, you're going to go see through it. Unfortunately, you know, I'm telling you from my experience, from other Christians' experience, you know, when you see it in the Word of God, right? right. Look at David. What happened? Do you think that adultery, did he ever think that that would lead to murder? He didn't. Once he starts... It's not going to stop. That's why what's the best thing to do? Don't start at all. Uh, why do you think Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil? Amen. Why do you think Bible says trust in the Lord with all thine heart, even though there's going to be difficulties that come along your way? Because Lord wants to protect you. Lord wants to be faithful. I mean, Lord is faithful. And Lord wants you to know that you can count on him to be faithful, Right? When you have no money in your bank account, are you going to go steal and gamble? Or are you going to just trust in the Lord? Amen. Right? Yes. When someone's pressuring you, right, your loved one or whoever you're dating is pressuring you to commit fornication, are you going to say no? Come on. Or are you going to fall into that temptation? Are you going to be faithful? Do you think that I'm going to lose that guy? I'm going to lose that girl? All good. Wow. And you're like, Lord, you know, I commit this fornication, but I'm going to say sorry, and then I'm going to try to convert that kid or convert that man and woman. What's going to happen to you? You are going to, I don't know, if you're a woman, you might get unwanted pregnant. If you're a guy, you might get you know, unwanted child. And then, you know what's going to happen? You bring black eye to the Lord. You bring black eye to church, your whole family, everybody. And then many times, the whole family just leaves the church because of you. Why? Because... When you could have trust the Lord, knowing that he's faithful, I'm going to say no to that person. And I know that if the Lord really wants this relationship, this godly relationship, if the Lord wants to keep this relationship, the Lord's going to make it work. Yes. And then if not, then that wasn't the right person. All good. Just get rid of it. There what? Amen. Four billion women and four billion men in the world. <laughs> That's not the only one for you out there, right? You know, there's a little bit of, you know, pain here and there, you know. you get over it. Time heals everything, yes. right? Then you cannot be faithful to people who's making you commit sin. Amen. You have to be faithful unto the Lord. Yes. If you are faithful unto the Lord, those unfaithful things, unfaithful situation, unfaithful people, either they correct themselves or the situation correct itself or... They just disappear. Right. Then, you know what you have? You have that peace. You have that godly peace. I mean, don't tell me, Christian, if you are living in sin, that you have peace. You will never, ever have a peace True. when you're living in sin. Yes. You just can't. Sure. I mean, you have Lord Jesus Christ inside of you. Amen. you have, you're sealed with the Holy Ghost. Right. You're grieving the Holy Ghost. Yeah. How do you think that you will have perfect peace? When you don't have right relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. When you keep on living in sin. 
That's why you have to really, really examine your life today. Examine not just, you know, just reading your Bible and praying life only. Examine every part of your life, you know, after you wake up and, you know, when you go to sleep. Everything that's happening in your life, examine it, right? What's happening at work? What's happening at home? What's happening, you know, wherever you are, you have to examine it. And you have to make sure that, am I really trusting in the Lord? Is my behavior reflecting trust in the Lord? Is my heart reflecting trusting in the Lord? Every part of my life. And if not, then you could expect. And this is a guarantee. You could expect those dominoes to fall. Thousand percent. I mean, I mean it's, it's almost like, you know, law, right? You know, it's going to happen. Because you and I are no different. We're human beings. We're just sinners saved by grace. Yeah. So we have all these fleshly desires that we have to fight on a daily basis. That's why Apostle Paul said, I die daily. You have to die daily. You have to think of your old self as, you know, crucified on the cross. You know, just leave it there. And you have to fight it. And if you don't, then what's going to happen? It's going to happen where you are currently. Because just by, you know, law of probability, many of you sitting here, many of you listening, is going through that domino effect. You have not trusted in the Lord, so it started falling. And you're at a place where many of the dominoes have fallen. And you're just at the last stage. You just don't know what to do. You try to keep your, you know, happy face, smiley face, joyous face in front of brothers and sisters in Christ. Maybe to your even own family. But deep inside, you only know, you and God only know, right? But you are going through such a tr struggle. You're going through such a pain. You're going through such difficulties. And you're going through such an emotional wreck right now. Sooner or later, you're going to break. Sooner or later, God might have to really deal with you and break you. Sooner or later, God would just reveal everything. Bring embarrassment, shame to you, your family, and everybody involved. Because the Bible says, be sure your sin will find you out. Yes. I mean, Galatians chapter 6, you reap what you sow. Be not deceived, God is not mock. Whatsoever you sow, you shall reap. So it's coming. Just think of it as a, you know, friendly reminder. Nah, think of it as a great warning. It's going to come to your life. If you don't get right with the Lord, if you don't trust in the Lord. That's why... You know, when you're at a loss, number one thing to do is what? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Amen. You have to trust the Lord. Don't trust the situation. Don't trust psychologists. Don't trust counselors out there, right? Don't trust, you know, advices from your friends, you know. Trust the Lord. You have to go to the Lord. Yes. I mean, you and I are blessed. We could go to him directly. We don't have to go through a father. We don't have to go through this, you know, some wicked priest. Right. You don't have to go through a false minister or preacher. Amen. You don't have to go through him through speaking in tongues or through visions. Right. No. You just go to him Woo. straight, right away, even now. Yes. Then what's the second thing? If you don't want to be at a loss, when you trust in the Lord all of your heart, you cannot, look at verse 5. You cannot lean on to your own understanding. Again, you and I could be smart. And I know some of you guys are smart. But does that compare to the word of God? No. Never. Never. Many, many smart people became dumb in front of the word of God. Amen. So just humble yourself. You know, you're not as smart as Bible. Yeah. Never. Then what should you do? You should not rely on your own understanding. You should rely on the Bible. Just rely on the Bible. <laughs> if you need an answer to certain things, Bible has answers to a lot of things, yeah. right? Bible says, you know, this is the example we use all the time, right? Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Amen. Bible clearly says it, right? Then don't be yoked together with unbelievers. You know, simple as that. They shouldn't be your best friends. You know, they shouldn't be ones that you always hang out. They shouldn't be the one that you'll be sleeping with, right? Woo. Don't be together, you know, separate yourself from them, right? 
and you have questions about, oh, should I obey this law or that law, right? Bible says, you know, obey the ordinances of men so that you'll be a good testimony to others. If it's within the law, you know, God generally put people so that you, for the good of people, unless it's communists or, you know, socialists out there, we're still in a capitalistic country, just obey it. There's no if and buts about it. Yes. I mean, Bible says it's a Bible way of obeying God. I mean, you don't want to be stupid and get arrested and do other stuff because you refuse to obey the word of God. Those are things that Bible has the answers to. Go to the word of God. Do not lean on your understanding because if you lean on your own understanding, what's going to happen? Like I mentioned previously, you're going to be humanistic. You're going to bring your reasonableness. You're going to bring your own justification. You try to be rational and understanding in so many situations. Lord, why do you think I needed to buy a lotto ticket? I don't have money. That's rational. Lord, what do you think I had to steal? What do you think I had to lie to family members to get money? Because I needed money, right? You know, what do you think I went to Las Vegas for a little bit? You know, did I want to go there, Lord? No, the situation put me in there. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be rational, Lord, right? It's just a couple of swings, you know, a couple of tables, you know. And I want some, you know. You provided me with food and the rent money. Unbeknownst to you, that's the devil helping you out. Then what happens? You get addicted. Whenever there's a problem like that, then who do you go first? You don't go to the Lord. You go to Las Vegas, right? Sometimes you go to online now. I mean, online, yeah. everywhere is some, you know, Las Vegas is online too, right? Then it starts your self-destruction all the way until you see the end. I'm telling you, majority of the people, Christians, I'm talking about saved, born again, Bible-believing, KJV-only Christians. Yes. When they start that road to sin, once you start, you are not going to stop. That's right. You just can't. You're too weak. Yes. But there's very few out there who could actually stop in the middle. Get right. Why? Because they trusted in the Lord. Amen. They stop leaning onto their own understanding. Amen. They're saying, man, my understanding, my own ways are trash. And this is basura at its Amen. best. Yes. I mean, it's trash at its best. You know what, Lord? You know, all this thoughts coming to me, all this thoughts making me, reminding me of all the past, you know. Wow. Man, Lord, I can't. It's help just, me. I just think of it as a trash. Then Lord's going to help you. Then Lord will, how should I say, rehab your heart. Lord will rehab your sinful ways. Thank you. Where little by little, man, you're building this dominoes back up. Because it's a battle until you die, yes. or until the Lord comes back. Man, that one I'm going to build, 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 build. Man, you're here again. But now you're building more. Man, you're continuously building, you know, those blocks. That means that you're getting closer and closer to the Lord. And those things will not have effect like in the past because it seems so distant, right? And then you're forgetting those things have passed, I mean, the past, and you're looking forward. And what's going to happen? You're going to start confessing your sins on a daily basis, Amen. like 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. So you're going to get right with the Lord on a daily basis. You're not even give a space and time and opportunity for even the current domino to fall. You're going to protect it and you're going to build it. And you're going to cling unto promises of God more and more. I'll finish with this. Let's turn our Bibles to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. As you trust in the Lord and you're not leaning on your own understanding, you're acknowledging him in all your path you're going to start doing this a lot more. And this will be like your goal in your life. And this will be 
like your heart's desire. Of course, you know, having right relationship with the Lord, you know, that's essential. But this is going to be part of it. Titus chapter 2, verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Literally, every day, you're going to live your life for the Lord to come back on that day. Literally, I'm talking about literally, you're going to live every day of your life as if Lord were to come Amen. that day. Yes. Literally, every day, you're going to live a life where you expect Lord to come and you're going to be found as a faithful servant. And literally, every day since you look for the Lord to come back and you live life as if Lord's coming back, you're going to have that joy and peace you're going to be courageous. You're going to be strong, just like Joshua. You're going to be that person where, man, whatever is happening in my life, I do my best according to the Word of God, deal with it. But I trust in the Lord, and He's faithful. Whatever situation I am in, Lord directs my path. And that is a Christian. That is a, how a Christian should live. And... That Christian, man, forget it. I mean, their dominoes are from here all the way to over there, and it's still building and building and building. They become a great testimony, encouragement to other brethren. You know, they become a great testimony to the Lord. And many times, maybe all the times, you won't be at a loss anymore because you trusted in the Lord with all of your heart. Let's pray. There, Father.